Hi guys, it's James from Wex Photo Video and today we're here at the Olympic Park in London. We're here at the Velodrome here with Eddie Keogh to test out Canon's brand new telephoto lens, the 100 to 300 f 2.8L. Tell us a little bit about yourself, you're a professional sports photographer. Yep, I've been shooting sport for probably over 35 years now, so um, I've shot probably most most sports you can think of, to be honest, over the years. I got here before for the, with the Olympics in 2012 and uh, and the build-up to that as well. There was a lot of test events here as well, so um, it should, should be quite interesting to sort of try a few different angles, you know, and just sort of see how, how the lens works. I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? It's a... Uh, it's far lighter th than what I was expecting. Uh, two eight through the through the range yeah. from one hundred to three hundred. So, I guess you've got the benefit of a lovely three hundred two eight, but the, the flexibility of changing that down to yeah. hundred as and when. So, um, so Eddie is going to be on the R three today with the one hundred to three hundred, and then I'm going to be on my R five with the two hundred to four hundred to give a little bit of a, a difference. We'll see yeah. what one's like, and then we'll probably swap over later on in the review. We've had the cyclist go around a couple times at the moment. What have you found so far in using it? Because I found the 200 to 400 is great for this kind of distance. What's the 100 to 300 been like? I mean, it, is, it certainly is handy. I mean, you've basically got a 300 to 8, and then, you know, so you could do a head on shot as literally as the cyclist comes around like that. You've nice head on shot, and then just there, you then rack back to like 100 mil, so you get a totally different shot. You get, yeah. So you've got a head on shot of the cyclist and then you just wait a second and then you get a nice side on so you really see the profile yeah. of the bike. And I guess that is, that's the selling point, is the flexibility of it. It's just that you can not just do one job, you can do yeah. an extra as well. Because um, it's, it, it's the speed. Yeah. Basically, you, 300 mil, bang, you're on a different lens. Yeah. So, you, so you're getting the kind of, the benefits of the kind of flexibility of the zoom range of 100 to 300, but you're also getting the benefit at the same time of a prime lens yeah. with the f point I mean, two, at 2.8, two it is it's still a lovely yeah. lens. So, I mean, indeed, we still want a lovely, a, a lovely image, and it is giving that nice image with, at 2.8, we're throwing the background out, so it's, um, it's still giving you, yeah, a beautiful image. Right, let's yeah. see if we can get some yeah. more nice images. Okay, let's test the AF on this now. It's just uh, coming around. I've just locked on the subject tracking. So here we go. Just fill in the wait till we fill the frame. Fill in the frame, then racking back. Right. So we've got two sets of images there. First lot, and let's go back. Let's try it again. Yep. Yeah. So we're shooting upright. Here we go. Fill the frame and back. That's good, nice head on shot. And then as he comes through, just racking back. So you get more, you get just getting more pictures, aren't you? You know, rather than just the one, the one set of pictures on the 300. So you rack it back and you get another, another dozen frames, which is handy. Here we go. Okay, let's, um, here's an old test. Indoors, we're going to stick a converter on. Let's see if it can still do the business with the autofocus. That's on there. And let's see what we can get with the converter. Okay. All right, so that's followed through. So that's, oh, I mean, that is mad sharp as well still, even with the converter on. That's at the 300 mil uh, with the converter on, so that's 420, so the range with the converter on is 140 to 420, so that's another pretty versatile lens, isn't it? It's, it's pretty impressive. Just to say that the, the balance of the lens is actually really nice as well. The way the glass is set, more, more in the middle, just much nicer balance. If you, if you have to hand hold it, I'm not saying you're going to hand hold it all the time, but in certain situations you will hand, hand hold it. It's not, at the end of the day, it's not a it's not a heavy lens, you know, you can literally balance that on your little finger if you want to. You can use it with or without a monopod. I mean, the, if you are going to be racking back a lot, I think a monopod would be probably, would help just to do a smoother, smoother rack. Because when you're handy holding it, if you wanted to rack back, you'd probably have to come over the top. So you can do it in a, in a smoothish movement. Yeah, very nice.
Right, so we've just finished in the velodrome. We've come outside to some tennis courts. So we're gonna try a little bit of a different situation. Again, indoor, got a little bit more of a controlled lighting situation. We're outside, obviously we've got the quite bra, lovely sunny day. Makes it a bit different from the terrible weather we've had previously. So we're gonna try, you know, to use the court to separate foreground and backgrounds. Okay, I'm just trying the 300 mil at the moment because it's uh, into the light. Um, this is kind of quite a good test with this because occasionally the, when they come to the court, you've got to kind of, the focus has to kind of go through the net so it's the subject tracking. We'll just hold on to the, hold on to the player as they come closer. You know, you're just having that a little bit wider so just give it a little bit more room sometimes if you want to shoot landscape. So you're not stuck on the 300. So you've still got that lovely 2.8 feel of a long lens. So the beauty of that is as they come to the net, you obviously want to zoom back a little bit, you know, so that's the beauty of the zoom. Let's try a different angle, eh? Try a different bit of light. So I'm going to start off on the 300, do the serve, then I'll probably zoom out depending on where he goes, he's staying on the back of the court. But the beauty of this is if he comes forward, there we go, like now, I can just zoom out and it'll be I'm still kind of full in the frame. Okay, so let's have another little test uh, here. We're gonna shoot with the 100 or 300, but I've got, I've got a little doubler on here. So we're shooting uh, 2500 f5.6. Uh, I'm shooting against the light as well, which is another little test for it. Uh, we're up to 2000 ISO, but that doesn't really matter because the quality is so good anyway. So I'm going to shoot some shots of these boys. So I'm, I'm even low down, so I've got, I'm seeing a lot of net in the picture as well. So let's see how the um, focus copes with shooting over the net. Okay, here we go. I'm going to do a full length first of all. Right, okay, it's holding on to that. Let's see, let's see the real test when he starts running towards the net. There we go, so we've got him serving there. I'm shooting upright, I'm kind of the whole body, tight as possible. That's a nice shot. Uh, that was 450 mil for most of that. Let's try and go really tight. Let's go 600 mil on the serve and then I can zoom out. Um, so, big serve, tight on that, and then I zoom out a little bit so I get the full body. And, it's, and even though the net, the net is going right through half the body, it's staying sharp on him. So that's pretty good for two times. Genuinely, it's not jumping off the subject at all. Focus on this lens is well. Combined with the R3, to be fair, it's, um, it's a decent combination. I think I'll be, I'll be very keen to give this lens a go at Wimbledon this year. When it comes to image stabilisation, this lens is really good, so it'd be amazing for photo and video. It's got up to 5.5 stops of image stabilisation built optically into the lens, and then when you couple it with any kind of R3, R5, or basically any camera with image stabilisation, IBIS, then you get up to six stops. So if you're going for slightly slower shutter speeds in photography to get that nice motion blur effect, then that is possible with this lens. Right, so let's just quickly move on to the other side of the court. The sun's quite bright and quite harsh. Now, talking about that, chromatic aberration can sometimes be an issue on very high contrast edges. Now, this lens has got four low dispersion elements inside, which is designed to kind of reduce the amount of chromatic aberration found within, especially if you're shooting on a day like today with you know, clothing that's white and black, very high contrast. I'm gonna see what it's like and show you a few sample assets because that's always something I've always noticed, especially when it comes to sport photography. On a very bright day like today, incredibly high contrast with the, the white and the blue and the black. So it is a really good, really good test to see, show you how good those low dispersion lenses are, because it should be quite noticeable. And other lenses I own, especially my older EF lenses, it is very noticeable. But on this lens, it's almost nothing to be seen, which is a real testament to those, those low dispersion elements.
Right, so after using it for the afternoon, what do you thought about the lens? It is a, a, it's a beautiful lens, to be fair. I mean, if you were thinking of buying a, 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 a new 302A, then if you can't afford the extra pennies, then you're getting so much more, because to have that, you know, as, we, as we've seen today, the sort of things we've been photographing, I've been photographing on the 300 and then racking back and getting a kind of a different angle on something else. And even with the converters on as well, uh, the converters, like you, you wouldn't know you've got a converter on, the, the focus is... I mean, we did a test and hopefully we can kind of show people some of the, the pictures that we've done. So if you're thinking of getting any f2.8 prime lens, I mm. think this is where this lens stands out because you're getting the, the benefit of that f2.8, which is that nice shallow depth of field, again, really good for kind of low light. But you're also getting the versatility of a zoom lens. Mm. So you're getting kind of, and also the quality of the, the images, the pure like sharpness of it was also really, really good. It's a little bit more expensive than other lenses that we are comparing it to, like the 100 to 500, the 70 yeah. to 200. Uh, this is coming in at around 11,500. Again, at the time of filming, it may change. So it is definitely on the more expensive side, but yeah. the quality you're getting, I think, really does warrant that price, I really do yeah. think. This lens, is, as you say, is quite a niche lens. It's specific to people who want to shoot, uh, say like we've been shooting today, sort of cycling, the tennis, a lot of indoor court sports, but, but it doesn't just stop there to be fair. I mean, wildlife photographers will, will be able to use this lens as well. So with a converter on, it goes up to 600 mil. Yeah. So have that di diversity of being able to literally, if you have the, the converters from 100 to 600. So whilst we've got both of these cameras here, let's talk about the new firmware update that Canon have announced. So they've got announced the new R5 1.8.1 and the new R3 1.4.0. <coughs> so with, obviously you've got the R3, you've updated it. What have you found that's most handy? It's funny, I think the panning assist is probably the most interesting kind of little update. That panning is very hit and miss anyway. So you can shoot literally a couple hundred frames and not get anything, but um, I think this just helps that, that hit rate where you, you need something to sharpen yeah. that picture with us and you still have the lovely streaks of that lovely feel of movement, so um, yeah. And there's an, also an FTP update as well for, for both cameras, the R3 and also the R5. Yeah, which is handy for a, kind of a lot of guys. I, I work with Getty Images, so we're shooting live uh, pictures, so basically as, as as the game is progressing, if someone scores a goal, we're sending the pictures and the celebration, we're sending pictures. So now there's a, an update which helps you, it, it automatically tags each picture that you send on FTP so that when you're going back through your pictures, you can see what you've sent and then you can work out whether you've sent the best picture or not, basically. Yeah, so, um, no, it's, yeah. It's, I think it's really good for sports talk for anyone that's after kind of instant access to protect yeah. their images. I think both these updates are actually yeah. really, really handy. And with the Canon R5, we're looking at a new high resolution mode, which is something I've been waiting for for Canon for years. What it does is it takes nine consecutive photos using the inbuilt image stabilization of the camera. Obviously a tripod is recommended and it basically stitches together in camera a 400 megapixel image. Obviously Canon R5 is 45 megapixels, so times that by nine, you're getting a rough 400 megapixel image, which is amazing. So it's been a really good day with this Canon lens. We've been to a variety of different sporting locations. Highly recommend going to the velodrome or any, basically the Olympic Park in general. Great amount of sport and the availability of it as well. And this lens performed incredibly well, both in an indoor and outdoor situation. So if you are a sports photographer or even a wildlife photographer, we were mentioning earlier, a fashion photographer, Ever. to be honest, this lens, if, if you're after that specific 100 to 300, or like we were saying, you're after a 300 prime lens, then this could definitely be worth a spot in your camera bag. I've been James and this has been Eddie for Wex Photo Video, and I'll catch you guys next time.